the right amount of the power picks so that way you can guarantee two of them for yourself you're kind of forcing your opponent into some awkward positions so the zigs make sense the shen and the kais i feel like reaction bans though from nine lives less of these big meta pushes so we actually see the vladimir jace and gwen i'm wondering what the other priority picks atrox is up are they gonna lock it in no no atrox for nine lives i'm slamming that down if i'm afro right now yeah, I mean, you've got the likes of the Aatrox through, Gragas is still there, Camille, Fiora is still up, oh. so a lot of these big, the massively banned champions are still up, and they go for the Camille, so they've locked in the Camille, but they can also lock in another massive champ, and they go for the Gragas. Okay, so Camille, Gragas instead of the Aatrox. Now, I assume that means that they're just not prioritizing Ooh. Aatrox. I feel like they would have, uh, the Camille's less flexible, so it's picked up instead by Nine Lives on a little bit lower in the rotation. They also grab the Galio to take that away from the Camille combo because that is kind of scary to see Camille plus uh, Galio, even though they didn't opt towards uh, prioritizing that early in the draft last time around. With the Aatrox, it is so powerful on its own. Arguable that the Camille can, uh, you know, have a few things in her kit to help deal with it, but I am still surprised to see them prioritize Camille over that pick. Yeah, definitely. I thought they probably would have gone for the Camille Galio straighter there for the second uh, pick, just to sort of keep it from yeah. the enemy. But um, the fact that they've got the Aatrox going in there, especially Aatrox with his sustain, uh, and then having the Galio be able to go in as a second wind as well, is going to be a big thing for Nine Lives. Whether they will execute it is another matter, whether they'll have the confidence to do it. I don't think it's a player skill. I think it's the confidence that we spoke about in that first match. Uh, but they do have the Varus as well with the Chains of Corruption, so maybe these a little bit more uh, avenues of CC is going to be what they needed for seeing these fights through to the end. Uh, we do get the Zeri pick as on the third pick for uh, Afro, which we don't really see Zeri much, but fair play. Yeah, a little bit shorter range than the Varus in terms of effective damage. You're mostly looking to play around those walls. Uh, that's where you get your mobility and a little bit extra of that range. But it can be a good kind of sweep up the team fight after initial, um, you know, burst has gone through. If you're able to have space made for you, she is an incredible AD carry. They actually, just run around. You do have Gragas who will help out with that. Camille, arguable at least to start off some of the fights. Volibear too. This is a aggressive jungler that we saw all the way back in game one, kind of get off the ground rolling. Maybe they can do that again here. Yeah, my initial thoughts, if they went for the Galio, maybe we would, get, we would have gotten like the, the likes of the Gragas in the jungle, because once again, it's kind of like a trade for that Shen being quite a jungly, uh, jungle, uh, uh, a tank jungle. Oh, my words are slipping up. It's okay. Um, but the established it's, it's a late good... night for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I planted that seed a bit early just to make yeah. sure it was uh, <laughs> definitely parred off by the... Uh, the chat. But yeah, Bonnie Bear is a good substitute for the Shen as well in that jungle. Uh, interesting that they've gone for the Cassidy as the last pick. I yeah, I, I can't remember the last time I've seen a Cassidy in Blind. a competitive matchup. Blind yeah. last pick Cassidy is a bold move, and I love the Lucian to punish this. Lucian can outrange the Cassidy, can chase the Cassidy down pre level five. You are looking to punish Incent as much as possible do not let this mid lane champion get off the ground because if Cassidy gets fed Cassidy is a nightmare but it's kind of tough to get to that point especially if it's a blind pick and I think that Afro had a really solid response to that I am expecting it to be the Lucian counter I suppose they haven't swapped around their champs yet on our screen so maybe they have a different plan in mind but I am assuming it would be Lucian into that mid lane pick but no, right now they actually still have Lucian bot with Zeri in the mid lane. Either way, I guess it's still the same thought process. You have range. Um, you can just punish the cast for every single creep that they walk forward to try and get. Uh, and it will be difficult to get away from this champion as well. Yeah, you can kind of see like the playbook already what's going to happen with nine lives here. They are going to try and at least get that Galio to roam up into the mid lane because obviously with the Zeri or the Lucian, they've got a chance to get out of there with both either a dash or going over the wall um so if we get the likes of the galio looking for a roam up into that mid lane to get the taunt onto them then that leads into the cassidy being able to get in and do that massive damage especially onto low health champions so i think that's probably going to be their key away into trying to pick off either the zeri or the lucian 
whether they'll be successful about it or confident with this engage is another matter uh, because they do have the likes of Volibear on the side of uh, Afro and they have the Gragas and the Camille so they can't make sort of like the the uh, the assumption that there's going to be nobody around because we saw the massive roam from the Shen. Uh, mm. Volibear we know can jump over walls. Camille can literally glide over walls and then Gragas can just belly flop over them so it's there's ways that they can Easy to get this Galio. Exactly. If they're, if they're thinking of this is the mentality of getting the gank in the mid lane, there's plenty of ways that Afro have a way around that. But less about uh, speculating. We are into the match, and I'm pretty sure we'll probably find out if that is the case very soon. Here we go. Loaded in for what could be the final game of the weekend here. Afro have one more, and then they are into the next round of the bracket. Nine lives are fighting for their lives right now. They need to pick up two in a row as Kevy starts off in the top lane. Interesting focus right now, giving solo golden experience down to souls and instead having the Galio up top early to help out Aatrox. Yeah, a very EU meta there to begin with, but we in we, EU would have stuck around a lot more in that Baron lane rather than just that first minion wave clear. Uh, but we're seeing that, yeah, the Galio so, so far is looking for that roam potential. He is now heading down to the duo lane uh, and to support his Varus. But now Gragas decides to tag out with the Galio getting in there, knowing yeah. that Gragas is going to go in possibly to the Wukong. Well, I, I want to point out something that it's actually Hexaton still on the Lucian, but is playing in the mid lane here. So they are putting the Lucian to the Kassadin. I'm happier with this matchup. I feel like it punishes the Kassadin harder than the Zeri would be able to. But it just shows that Tengen's feels more comfortable on the Zeri. Hexaton feels more comfortable on the Lucian. Uh, or at least that's what I would assume. Kevi trying to do something mid. Can't find anything, though, as Incense trying to grab the minions underneath the turret. Actually doing a fine job of it so far. Hasn't been punished all too hard by the Lucian yet, but I expect that to change. No, yeah, we're getting a bit of a 2v1 engage here, possibly. On the Wukong with Galio and oh, a pretty close by. Blue team managed to get first blood onto Gragas though. This is giving this is giving a bit more confidence to this engage. It's going to take place, but Zeri gets a kill across the map. Aatrox going in onto the Volibear takes out Volibear. This is a double kill for Aatrox now, and it's a three v one under the turret for Camille. She has her a dash oh. still, but she didn't get over there. That's a big lead oh, for okay. 9-Live straight away. All right, the Ignite getting the kill onto Apollo maybe saves the game here, but this is a good start for 9-Lives. I mean, the Kassadin is not punished too hard early. Is up 500 gold versus Hexaton with three assists to their name. And a decent gold lead to start things off here for 9-Lives as a team. I don't know how Souls got first blood. I wish we could go back and watch that. That was a 1v2. It must have just been a misplay by Ramita. Maybe going over aggressive and then taking too much damage to the minions. Either way, the Varus gets a 1v2 kill and then everything goes well for the top side. And cast in level five now. Has the early boots. They're going for another play. Yep, Kevy in there. We see that the casting went in as well. It was one of those um, times where they didn't quite commit with it, but we could see the Aatrox getting picked off here. Yes, Volibear ultimate straight under the turret. He is full health. He has the chance to do it, but we are seeing a three rotating down oh. to the spotlight, lane, taking up Zeri again. Thanks for the chains of corruption as well. Ooh. Well Souls played by Souls landing that. Incredibly right now. First the 1v2, then that. Gets the wave shoved under, lands a chain of corruption, tanks up a couple shots as well to get as much damage as possible onto Tengen, who is now one and one on the Zeri. But the top play going their way feels good, and now as I'm praising souls, I also cast a curse them. Uh, <laughs> take on that Ramina. Yeah, we can't go with a cast a curse in Wild Rift. It is, it, it's the bread and butter, I think, of the uh, competitive scene. But to talk about the Camille in that top lane, managing to take out the Aatrox with the help of Volibear, but then also managed to take out quite a few of the turret plating, so that's going to be quite a bit of gold in her back pocket now. 
uh, which is also going to help uh, Weasel in that top lane. In there. They're now ahead of gold, very slightly by 150, I would say, um, which is, isn't massive. It's uh, a matter of a bit of farm and a bit of focus from uh, Garu in the top lane. But uh, nonetheless, it's always handy to have those turrets plated to take it down. Yeah, it's, the and, big thing uh, is that Garu was up like 800 gold before that. So even though Wigzel did not get the kill, it was Reaver that picked it up. It's the fact that the turret plates then evened it out, actually give a slight advantage now to Wixel, who is still not, hasn't spent all that gold yet. It is still currently an item lead for Garu. But I think Wixel's playing this one pretty well, all things considered. Kevi is now level six, so it has the Galley ultimate, can get around onto the map. I expect to see Kevi hanging around mid lane often from this point forward. Mm -hmm. So that is something that Wixel needs to keep in mind. Use the Camille ultimate offensively. Well, hey, you're still locked in there. The Galio will be able to ult onto anybody that you ult on to. So you need to be respecting this from this point forward. I like this play into the Galio now instead. Yeah, Baron missing out on that poke damage early on into the direction in the mid lane. I feel like Afro are going to go for the Rift Herald and prioritize it this time because they have literally three turrets. They could drop this Rift Herald in any of these lanes and secure the turret with a breeze. Uh, the Rift Herald resetting ever so slightly. They take a lot of damage there from the Varus poke, which is unfortunate, especially if there's an engage to happen. But they weren't thinking of going for the engage and Aatrox is currently down there on the ocean drink waiting for his team to come they drop the rift herald in mid oh uh, we still have the volley bear with the ult though i mean maybe Soul gets his oh ult. big barrel oh, oh where the pit unfortunate i mean unfortunate for afro but great for nine lives they managed to secure the dragon there we have quite a few champions are low health Garu just about to survive he does get taken out by uh, Ramita there which is very nicely done and Ramita ain't been able to escape because of uh, Tengen there on the Zeri it's unfortunate they couldn't wait to clear this because the turret is currently focusing on that Brat Rift Herald it could have been a nice little interaction onto that second tier turret to take it down but Unfortunately, they didn't quite have that minion wave cleared to allow that repel to connect to uh, the second tier turret. Barriers up. You're going to pop oh, it. Oh, 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 the out Beautiful. way. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, that's why barrier sometimes can uh, catch the fly surprise as opposed ah. to exhaust. If you see the exhaust go down, you know what's coming. If you see the barrier, a lot of people don't factor that into their math. Mm. And the Varus pass is stacking up there. I want to go to the implications of everything that's happened here, but I don't think I'll have time because it looks like another play is happening here. Exactly. Yeah, we've definitely got something going on between the Camille, the Cassadin, and the Wukong. Oh, Camille, Ooh. pretty low. We have the Volibear in there. We have Gragas coming around as well. They're doing a lot of damage on the side of nine lives currently. Gragas into oh. the fight barrel, bring in the Aatrox to the back Huge. line. Very nicely done. Their X Tech Ultimate and take it out the Wukong. That is a 2 0 trade for Afro right now, and possibly a Baron Lane turret as well, bringing them to two turrets to zero. Uh, there's no way that the Galleons get in there. Chains of Corruption, but the status as well. We see Volibear looking to not be. Oh, dude. Ah, Reaper needed to get out of there, not back in there. Yeah. Ooh, that's a little <laughs> rough from Afro. I think they were in a really powerful spot. They're still in a good spot, especially because they didn't even have their AD carry tank. It just gets a full turret to themselves in the bot lane. Yeah. And is now caught up in gold to souls. But could have been a little bit better if they hadn't given over a few more. Now mid lane play. Oh, Tengen! Oh, in with the massive ult. Nicely done. Galio ultimate there just to sort of keep himself alive. We see the Camille taking down the Wukong as well. Uh, we could see a 3-0 trade here in the mid lane. This is massive for Afro. Yeah, They've it, all of a sudden steamrolled. If you're nine lives, you do not want to be the team running away from the enemy. Because yeah. Camille, Zeri, Lucian, it is almost impossible. Okay, well, Souls will get one for the trouble. Takes down Hexaton, but Tengen is still there. If Afro are the ones with forward momentum, that is where their composition wants to be, they can run you down to the ends of the earth, or at least to the end of your fountain. And they're showing that demonstrated right there. They've played this out incredible. Remember, there was a 2,000 gold lead very early for nine lives, but that has been wrestled back. 6,000 is now the lead here for Afro. And while there is still scaling on the Cassadin, I think the Cassadin's been slowed down enough that I'm not super worried about it right now, but it still should be on the minds of Afro. And Scent finally gets the Rod of Ages. 
Took a lot of time to get there because it went for the boots instead. I'm, I'm wondering if that's meta or if that was just a decision. But now focus on the cast. And oh, dodged Ooh. out on the body slam. Okay. Yeah. Nice Either way, that's a ticking time bomb. Incent will be a problem eventually. It just comes down to win. And can they have enough Wait. of a gold lead at that point? And can they just pop him? Ooh, almost 100 0 by Hexaton. Yeah, it was almost a close kill there. We see Aatrox in that bush looking for somebody to pick out there. But I feel like if your choices are between a Volibear, a, a Gragas, or a Lucian, you're going to try and jump on the Lucian. But you've also then got Gragas and Volibear to answer to if you do decide to follow that through. Uh, 28 seconds on the Infernal Drake as well. Will we see that... Afro managed to secure a dragon for themselves this time. They didn't quite get the Ocean Drake because they did prioritize the Rift Herald, and rightfully so, they managed to get that mid lane and give a great uh, lane priority for themselves. But we see a odd, a oh. little Cassidy getting caught out there, as well as the Galio being forced to flash, but then Volibear straight over the wall, taking down the Galio. So already putting nine lives at a disadvantage into this dragon fight. No hesitation from Reaper, follows over the wall with the ultimate, and they will earn themselves a dragon. Afro are so quick to pull the trigger. This team is decisive. They are urgently playing this one out. They do not want to go to that game three, and they would be happy to just punch their ticket to the next bracket right here, right now. Very impressed with how the team yeah. has approached the map, how they've approached game two in particular. It's very different from game one. We've seen a different look from Afro where they have to play from behind, but the coordination is still there regardless of if they have a lead or not. Yeah, definitely. We're, and on the side of Nine Lives, obviously we've seen a few more kills actually being picked up for them. Uh, there was a few champions in the, the last match that were managing to get zero death. But this time around is a bit unfortunate. So unfortunate for Afro, but unfortunate for Nine Lives. Uh, we see Garu going 2v1 uh -oh. here. There, the Galio's coming in onto the Camille. They've caught her out under the oh. turret there. The back of the line is the Ignite that's going on. Doesn't quite manage to kill it, but we do see that he drops auto attacks that last little bit to take out the Camille. So Camille yeah. is down. I feel like that Galio intrusion into that interaction really threw that into Garu's favor. Yeah, Reaper pulled back as Wizzle went in with the Hexite Ultimatum. I think a little bit of miscommunication of, wait, are we hard committing or not? And uh, I think the answer, uh, my decision would have been back off. <laughs> Once Aatrox pops old, it's so hard to actually kill him uh, that far under the turret, especially with the Galio. But either way, we're back to live. Okay, oh. a lot of damage being done by Lucian. Gragas with the E of the Flash in there, taking out the Soul Pulse. Possibly they do. So Souls is down. That's one big, one big massive damage output taken down. Kevin looking to go down as well. Tried to E out of there, but got caught by the Gragas. And then Lucian picking up that kill, which was nicely done. Camille's now back in that Baron lane, but they do lose the Baron lane. It's looking like Cassidy is trying to take another minor victory down in that bot yeah. lane as well, whilst Afro take a massive victory in this Baron Nacho uncontested. Yeah. Great time to get a pick, right as Baron's up, and again, the team pulls the trigger together, they commit to the play together. I wonder what happened to Souls there, it looked like he was just standing in place, but Barrier and Flash were down, I didn't see the Flash go off. I'm wondering if maybe there was like a miss input or he was trying to flash over a wall, either way, Ramita locked down Souls for much longer than I was expecting there, and it was at the right place at the right time, they're benefited with the Baron buff, and Afro now with a, uh, maybe not massive gold lead, but a comfortable gold lead. And this Baron to make that even bigger have uh, done their due diligence so far. We still will say that the Cassidy scales and will become a monster. But with a Baron buff, you can try and mitigate that. Take an inhibitor if you can. And then you're preventing a lot of the threat of the Cassidy. And you're forcing somebody to answer that wave. And then you can just get a lot done as five elsewhere on the map. Yeah, definitely. Reaper doing what Reaper's doing best in terms of not just clearing at jungle camps at this point, but trying to push that mid lane. We've got a three lane push going on currently. We Ooh. see that the bot lane and the Baron lane are all both at the inhibitor so far. Uh, Volibear is still looking to push that mid lane to the inhibitor as well. Uh, we've got the Galio going into the front line to take some of the damage. And the Volibear going Dead. straight over the wall. That massive damage onto the turret. Chains of Corruption oh. onto the Volibear as well. Can we see the Wukong take out Volibear? Not quite enough damage. And the Cassidy uh, having flashed out. 
Oh, Souls is down too. Oh, everybody's running back as Souls goes forward yep. to try to get damage in. Now Incent, the last bastion of hope here. No Cyclone on Apollo, so he's not a big threat. He dives in regardless. <laughs> Apollo trying his best to try to take out some oh. champions here, but uh, they are currently down. Four champions, uh, three champions now. Aatrox is now back up. Aatrox going in with the flash though. That was quite aggressive, but didn't quite commit to it because if they didn't, it would mean that their Nexus would have taken a lot more damage than it needed to. Uh, but they are all inhibitors down. They have nothing protecting their Nexus other than their teammates right now. And Afro are able to rotate, uh, recall back and get some more items, spend their gold whilst they wait for this final dragon to be up. It is the Ice Drake, but if they do get it, it's going to empower their Infernal Drake, which is obviously going to be a great thing for them. Not like they currently need it. Their 9k gold ahead, which is obviously now slowly becoming out of the control of uh, 9 lives, and they've had their Baron. They've literally got the inhibitor, and I don't think there's a chance that they can steal this uh, with Wukong being kept out it's of not the solid. jungle objective. The only hope right now is Incent with three item casted in. It's got to be a casted in moment right here. It's got to be right now because they're the ones getting played onto. But Incent is not going for the play. Incent's actually running away and leaving Kevy out to dry a little bit here. Going to need to find a different moment to go in. Yeah. It's again picked up here by no. the Gragas. Oh, no. He's meant to still survive. We see the Volibear going in. Volibear taking a lot of damage from the base. Wukong with a triple knock up there, but the Nexus is going to go down. The minions are there, and it is a 2-0 for Afro Z3 going through to the next round of the Void Series. Yeah, congratulations to Team Afro. A very clean series. The only time they were down in gold was like the first four minutes of that game, but they brought it back and they did not let it go. I'm very impressed with the coordination of this team in particular. Mm -hmm. They're on their objective timers. They know when they have these windows to go aggressive. D the double marksman composition of Zeri Lucian, we saw like two or three instances where I don't even know how much information they had. I wasn't keeping track of like what was happening elsewhere on the map, but they see somebody and they just run them down <laughs> like you're not gonna escape from us we got dashes we can jump over balls we have speed ups and range so good luck getting out of all of that and the casting just wasn't able to get to this point where it was a threat by the time it was a threat they didn't actually find the play or didn't go for the play so afro yeah well done well played yeah yeah just a, a little bit of a, a sh just a, a call out here for uh the dual uh, ADC team comp there, really good. And obviously, as we can see, the Zeri was actually cooking up something there with the uh, last bit of uh, item going to be the AP item. Ooh, uh, more than likely yeah. going to be that Rift Maker again. But yeah, um, very well played by Z3 there. Really well played in terms of the motion of the ocean of that, as we would call... Uh, Paraphrase, the Wild Rift is like a dance. It is the motion of the ocean that literally was in the flavor of uh, Afro there. Unfortunately for Nine Lives, they are out of the competition. But uh, good luck next time. And we mm -hmm. head over to our analyst, Mr. Blaziken. Yeah, so this is going to be my last analysis section for the weekend. And I'm not going to be back until uh, finals. So I've got a lot. Ooh. A <laughs> lot to talk about. <laughs> all right. All right. Lay it on us. So first of all, I want to talk about the draft here because... Teams need to play Orn. This has been my my talking point for weeks at this point. But Orn is not good in the top lane. You should not play him there. He is a broken support because of how his passive works, right? You're getting that additional HP, additional armor, additional MR. You're also allowing your ADC to buy items uh, anywhere on the map. Since there's no mythic items in Wild Rift, right? None of the mythic Orn passives. You instead give the ability to buy items, as many of you have experienced in your ranked games. So that's why I want to see this Orn being picked. Any teams watching, pick Orn. Any teams listening, pick Orn. Pick Orn. <laughs> that said, I got to give some stuff for our uh, our casters to talk about here. Let them get in a little bit. What I want to talk about specifically is why do we think that Red Side is winning so much, right? I know that you, we talked about it earlier. Kangas mentioned they're 4-0 on the day at this point. Why do we think they're winning so much? Kangas? It, it's always tough to fully identify. I think a big part of it is that counter pick. We saw that be a huge factor in this last game. I think the dilution into the Cassadin was massive. Blind pick and Cassadin is not 
recommended in my book. Uh, you should know what it is and be confident in the, the composition before you lock that champion in. And leaving something, uh, a counter pick up is just rough in general. So I think that this last game was a big example of that. I'm trying to think back. I know at least one of the other games, I factored that red five pick heavily into why they were able to win, but I'm blanking on it right now. Um, I have no excuse like blame. It's not 11 p.m. for me, but I, my brain's uh, just small. I mean, if, if, if you're talking about drafts, I've got a little notepad here right next to me where Ooh. I have the drafts written down, right? Uh, think of game one on the day. That red five pick was that Senna, which came in really clutch. The second yes. time, it was that Fizz. Yes, the Fizz one. In the previous game, it was the Corky.